Hello, everybody. It's the Wrestling with the Willies podcast. It's uh, time for the AEW Revolution 2023 edition. We're a bit late, mostly because the shit's been going on pretty much trying to, like, shuffle everything. But uh, so, yeah, this was actually a pretty good pay-per-view. And it turns out that they did have a kickoff show. We watched it after it already aired already the the next day after it aired so like we missed all the kickoff show i mean it wasn't much of one it was just mark briscoe and the lucha brothers going against re davari and the varsity athletes i guess that's what they're calling josh woods and tony nice now so yeah and they lost to mark and the lucha brothers which i'm not surprised in so so, yeah, it kind of made sense for that anyway. But the main, first official match was Ricky Starks versus Chris Jericho. And I and the J- Jericho Appreciation Society was banned from ringside. So I had a feeling that Ricky, um, Ricky Starks needed the win anyway for them to like, move past it and try to figure out something for Ricky Starks now. But, um... But the match was. Well, I'm just glad to see that uh, Chris Jericho didn't win another match. Yeah, because I mean, like he keeps winning. It's an, rather annoying. Yeah, he doesn't need to win every. We talked about this when we watched it. Oh, he doesn't need to win every match that he's in. And I don't feel he's that great of a wrestler anymore. I don't know if it's because I think his age is showing. I mean. At least that's what I'm noticing. Yeah, I think he's probably not going to wrestle much longer anyway. I think he's just doing it. Like, I think it's the twilight years of his career right now. Like, But, I mean, I say this shit, and he'll keep wrestling for another, like, 10 or 15 years or something. But, uh... Well, if he's still getting paid, why wouldn't he? Yeah, exactly. (laughs) It's like... Uh, but like the main thing was uh, i mean there was not a whole lot to the match i mean like it was mostly like just chris jericho beating him up a lot and there so you could kind of tell that like ricky was going over anyway but i kind of like the um, like the finish was cool i like how he got him in uh, in the rochambeau and all that stuff but like, it was a pretty di- and good opener. That's the one thing that AEW kind of does well at, too. They do good openers for opening matches and stuff. Like, WWE is very, like, hit or miss with it, but AEW, more than most of the time, like, the opening match is usually pretty good. Well, that's what I've noticed so far. I mean, with a lot of the ones we've seen. Um... Yeah, like, that's the, uh, oh, whatever. I mean, like, uh, that's the main thing. I just wonder what they're going to do now. I forgot, I saw that Ricky Sturks was doing something on AEW, but I forgot who he was going after. <clears throat> like, I think I saw something from Dynamite or something that he was talking about. I think it might have been Ring of Honor or something, but... Oh, maybe. Oh, it was New Japan, I think. He was supposed to wrestle somebody in New Japan. Well, well, yeah, I mean, because they're setting up Forbidden Door 2. Um, so um, I think that's part of what we're starting to see. Is um, Yeah, and it sounds like Jeff Cobb's going to go against uh, Kenny Omega, too. They're kind of teasing towards that right now. Uh, Jeff Cobb. He he was he's in with Will Ospreay's group, where it's like Ozzy Open oh, and Jeff Cobb, Will. Uh, Will Ospreay, and then I think there's somebody else, but I can't remember. They were in the first uh, Ozzy Open or uh, Forbidden Door. Like I can't remember. Uh, yeah, the world. Like it's like. It's like the world something. It's called like the group they're in. Yeah, United Empire. Um, I think it's it is. Like, yeah, uh huh, yeah. Mm-hmm. So 
they, they were kind of teasing a new member too, from what I was hearing too. Somebody that I can't remember if it was in New Japan or it was some Chinese or Japanese dude. I can't remember for sure though. But uh. Yeah, so, and then there was Jungle Boy going against Christian Cage. It's kind of funny how they name him Jungle Boy, and then he goes by Jack Perry now. So they're just, like, really leaning into his uh, uh, father's roots, I guess, ever since, like, Christian uh, talked shit about his dad, I guess. <laughs> well, the funny thing was, and I want to go back to the Chris Jericho match. One thing I wanted to mention, remember, you mentioned the, the fact that... um jericho appreciation society was banned from ringside but then sammy guevara came out and oh, then yeah he ran out to interfere but action andretti stopped him but i'm like the what it, it always is amazing to me like the way these rules are that um if they're banned from ringside the minute he showed up jericho should have been disqualified though oh yeah uh, uh, that's the one thing I mean, that I because, always uh, try to figure out why they would say banned from ringside and then they would still come out and then they would still be able to wrestle. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's, it's the, I think we talked about it when we watch it. I'm like, wait a minute. So they're banned, but yet they came out anyways. It's like, it's, it's not the same as like when we talked about, um, was it? Elimination Chamber when uh, Logan Paul came out when when uh, Montez Ford feigned an injury or whatever you want to call it to allow Logan Paul to come into the chamber. Um, that's kind of the same thing, but not, he was Logan Paul wasn't banned and nobody was banned from. But typically, that's what the Elimination Chamber is: is that nobody's allowed in, right? So it's kind of the same thing, but. It always is amazing to me where they find these loopholes with the rules, or they just don't follow them. Yeah, it's like <laughs> okay. That's so the only thing an example that I think of that. AEW but, and a certain people kind of like uh, mess up with. Like you know, all wrestling promotions, it seems like they deal with that problem, making a story where it stays like as one cohesive story like if you're telling a story like these people are going to get banned from ringside they should have some comeuppance like either that sammy gets suspended for doing it or whatever you know what i'm saying <laughs> tell like yeah, some yeah. sort of serious story as to like getting comeuppance for actually coming out even though they was banned <sighs> But that's the main thing. So, like, it was a good opener, but then uh, Jungle Boy and Christian. Like, but one thing, uh, one what? thing that's customary with one thing that's customary with AEW matches, though, they always go pretty a good distance. Like, I mean, this one was one of the shortest ones, and it was thirteen minutes long. So, I mean. It, you know, in comparison to WWE matches, you know, when you've got some that go for when their cards five matches and they've got one that goes five minutes almost every time they have a uh, premium live event. So that's one thing I do like about AEW is that um, they have matches that are a little bit longer on average yeah especially kind of like goes to like it it gives the time for people to build matches like you know like the yeah the i mean thing. well it's amazing to me we always talk about brock when he and goldberg was the same way they'd come out and that's less oh it's just to show their face because literally their matches don't go longer than five minutes so anyways we can go on to the jungle boy match now i just wanted to point out the the uh part yeah, about figured. sammy guevara i just up. didn't know if there was anything else that you wanted to add at the time so i was like okay well <laughs> that's the main thing but uh what's it called 
So yeah, there uh, it was called the final burial match, which it's just the bury it alive match with a different name, with Christian Cage and Jungle Boy, and the match was okay, but like you could tell that even though that we were talking about this when we watched it, that uh, it's funny how they were showing like, oh, you don't have the uh the ability, uh, like you don't have the balls to do the kill shot type of thing with uh christian even though that they showed i think it was who did they face i forgot who the oh maybe oh, no, he already did it he, he 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 had already done it once yeah That's but i think I it like, might have been against like the young bucks or something i i can't remember for sure who it was but i'm pretty sure it was the young bucks when they won the when they were defending the tag belts against them i think because they were, uh, because I think that the Young Bucks did it to ju- uh, ju- uh, Jungle Boy or something. Uh, I'm, I might be wrong, but I'm, I thought it was the Young Bucks that did it. So I mean, because Christian was in the crew or whatever, so and that was when they were heels. But I mean, uh, oh, I meant, yeah, but that. I mean, Jungle Boy, Jungle Boy had done it to Christian before. Oh, he did when it he came to Christian back too. Yeah, and that's why I was throwing. Remember, he did it right in the middle of the, um, uh, the entrance way. Oh, uh, see, Christian I couldn't was remember laying on that. The, I don't remember when it was, but it was when he came back from. I think after when that happened to him, he did it to him, um, in a match previously. At least, maybe I'm thinking wrong but i'm pretty sure that jungle boy did it to i mean he Christian could have before like and it was like when he was still with luchasaurus or something i don't know you're talking well, about the concerto the right yeah because they showed yeah, at the very I mean, end of this one was that it ended with the concerto essentially like they were fighting back and forth and then uh, Christian was trying to hit him with it, and then eventually weaseled around it, and then he hit him with it. And then he had to drag him to the coffin or the casket or whatever. And then it was kind of weird. Once he shut the the lid, it just automatically fell. <laughs> yeah, it was a weird, weird drop. It was like, why did it? Just, yeah, it like exploded almost like a firework. It was kind of lame, honestly. Yeah, um, which he I think he just, the... you know, he, sh- yeah, he should have just had to close it, not do the whole. Oh, it dropped into the. But you know, if that's the worst thing we have to complain about when it comes to that, you know, whatever. Yeah, exactly. Like that's like the man. I'm like, yeah, it was probably one of my least favorite matches on the card. Probably, not saying that it was bad, but. It was like two of the uh, two of the matches I, I thought were like kind of like the my least favorite. Like I definitely think that the the next one was my favorite though, <laughs> by far. Oh yeah, by far. Yeah, I mean, like the House of Black. Bro- versus... Bro- Brody King was Brody King was badass in that match. Oh yeah, like the, uh, Brody King and like House of Black went against the Elite, and they gave a new ring theme to the house of black, which I kind of like better than the other one, but they all like were dripping with gold and white and black face paint. <laughs> and I was like, Oh, that is so dope. Especially Brody King. He looks so menacing. You no, know, that he's looked, he got all that damn face paint on his, <laughs> it looks like a skull face paint it looks like so menacing when he goes against anybody else and it's weird how the young bucks or well the elite have carry on wayward son as their theme song i don't understand that yeah we talked about that too it doesn't make sense to me either it don't make no sense why they would come out to that i don't know to me it just don't make no sense but uh yeah the the match was great kenny's great at wrestling and like still young bucks did their typical shit which i'm getting kind of tired of like the same moves over and over again 
but fucking shit like yeah i don't know you know uh, someone on a youtube channel maybe we'll do that have to count how many times they do a super kick in a match like you know it almost have like a carrying okay here's a match of the young bucks how many super kicks did they, did they do and like set up a tally count or something because in this match they did a shit ton of them yeah they super kicked them like um, at least 15 times i think like just thinking offhand because i know that they yeah, super kicked and- like brody like two, uh three of them did it at the same time like the whole elite hit brody with the like at least once i think the young bucks hit him twice with with both of each other, like, hitting them with it. So they were kicking them in the face, like, so many times. Buddy and Buddy Murphy, or, well, Buddy Matthews, I should say. But, like, he he did a lot. And, um, like, we were talking about it when we were watching him. He's just so damn fast where he does most of his moves. <laughs> like, he's, like, when I think about, like, guys that are super fast when they wrestle... It's like him and like Ricochet and maybe Will Ospreay. They all like are very speedy in the ring. It's kind of like a nice like uh, blend between all the members because it's like House of or like Brody King is like the bruiser or the hoss out of the group. Malachi's the leader, but then he's like also like the striker, and then like Buddy uh, Murphy. Is like the uh, the high flyer slash like agile agile dude. <laughs> so they, um, but like, there's like a move where they were trying to do the indie taker on. Shoot, I think Malachi Black. I think, and um, I think it was Matt that jumped off, but I can't remember for sure. But they kicked the shit, and like Buddy Matthews kicked the shit out of like the other Jackson and that was right before they put I can't remember what their finisher um the finishing move is called. It's like to where they uh put him into like uh talking, talking about Dante's that. Inferno. Dante's that what you're Inferno. About? That's what it was, yeah. They did that twice. They did I think they did it once on Kenny and then they did it on Nick or Matt Jackson, either one. I can't remember which but, like, they just showed that it's a devastating move. But, I mean, of course it is. <laughs> they just fling him. Well, you know, and, the, and, I mean, Brody King had a lot of segments in this match where he just fully dominated. And then one of the best segments in the match, and I typically don't like these, and I think I talked about it during the, ma- during the match when we watched it, was when everybody does their, like, it's, I wouldn't call it their finisher, but like their signature, I guess, um, on each other. So then, you know, like the Young Bucks did theirs and Malachi Black did his on somebody and Buddy Matthews did his and Brody King. You know, those segments where they, they go through all their signatures. I don't like that typically, but I liked it in this match because of the pacing, I think. The pacing of the match was pretty good in this one. Yeah, especially yeah. you know that I so, love Kenny and like that House of Black is great, and they deserve the win too because I mean they were just came back from, I guess just taking a breather, and then it was, just made sense for the uh, the elite to drop the titles to him. So like, well, and 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 even Julia Hart got involved in this one. Like she took that V trigger from Kenny near the end. So, I mean, so, you know, she's much better utilized in this group than she was in Varsity Blondes. So, anyway, like, so pretty much the triple threat with Jamie Hayter, uh, Soraya, and Ruby Soho just seemed like they were just waiting for the end of it essentially like where it shows like what happened at afterwards because it seemed like uh, because the ending came out of nowhere because they and they had and jamie hater put him in a roll up which i didn't expect that's how she was going to win the match and i think it was against ruby soho too 
Well, yeah, it came out of it completely. It completely came out of nowhere. It was like, what? And because uh, uh, Ruby and uh, Jamie were uh, exchanging pins, and then uh, <laughs> then all oh, of a sudden, yeah, Hater did that's one. I totally and... forgot that they were exchanging pins, and then all of a sudden, she pinned her. I was like, what the hell? Why would she stop off of that? It was just a weird spot that they just, uh, I don't know why. They, it seemed like they just ran out of time, that they were doing it as they came in the ring, and then they were like, oh, you need to wrap this shit up. <laughs> yeah, because this was the shortest match of the night. It was 10 minutes. Yeah, and I like how Saran comes out to zombify too, but like... I de- I'm like, it's going to get old on me at one point, but still, it's kind of cool now that she's coming out to Ronnie's music, but <sighs> it's just weird. And then they built to, like, uh, which is, like, essentially the turn, which was Ruby Soho, like, she went over and uh, beat up and sided with, um, with Soraya and Tony Storm. So, um, like, pretty much they beat her, um, beat him up, and it's kind of like they're doing like a version where it's like the invasion, but instead it's kind of like in yeah, the, the, where they put L's on their well, chest it's, instead yeah, of it's the, the duo. Yeah, and it's like uh, WWE versus WCW, on the except it's AEW original females versus the. I guess you would call imports. So, yeah. Or the, the WWE women that came to AEW. Even that though that a couple the of beginning. them were like earning like other stars before then, but they blew up, like got bigger names of being in WWE essentially. <sighs> but, uh, what's it called? So I'm intrigued with that. I wonder who else is going to be in the group if they do like have other people come in and try to take well, over. Well, I mean, you know, we had just had... Event. Well, I mean... Yeah, I don't think Taya Valkyrie, who came in after this, would be part of this group. I don't see that being a match, but like, let's say Naomi or maybe Sasha... Well, Mercedes Monet, because I think after this pay-per-view, it was announced that she has no more events for New Japan lined up. Well, what, what, Mercedes Monet? Yeah, that she's done with all her appearances for them. Well, so, um, I mean, knowing that she's there's, got the there's belt. There's rumors. <laughs> knowing that she's got the belt, I'm pretty sure she's probably going to be having it for a little bit. So they'll probably just have to re-negotiate like negotiate or she'll drop the title to somebody else. You know, like, but I... Uh, I don't know. No, there's just rumors that that. where's her, where's her next stop, you know, because her events are done there. So, I mean, the main thing is she could go anywhere right now. And I think that's what she kind of wants to do too. So I don't know. We'll find out. It would be cool if she would show up and then she would go in with the outcast. I mean, the whole Monet thing goes well with it too. So it makes sense. Yeah, the CEO. I mean, it, it kind of goes even with our old gimmick. I mean, the boss, instead of the boss, she's CEO now. It's kind of funny. Yeah. So, yeah, I don't know for what it was. But then I was surprised with uh, Adam Page and John Moxley, though, with how brutal it was. I mean, it wasn't like, okay, I've seen stuff with the Necro Butcher and stuff like that. Where it was just like, un- it's just too much. Like light bulbs shattering everywhere and all this shit. But Paige took some gnarly ass fucking shit in this damn match. Like more like John Moxley just keeps on fucking bleeding everywhere. <laughs> yeah, and he and and uh, he cut. It seemed like he cut himself. Oh wait, no, we're no. I'm thinking of the the later match. Yeah, he's so used to cutting himself that, you know, he just bleeds to bleed, I think. Yeah. But I don't think... I think he just likes I, to I, do that, that Adam shit. Page, when he... 
He does, but it's kind of you know, getting old. I mean, at least for me. Um, but I can tell you that fork part where he stabbed Paige in the forehead and that blood spurt all over him. Oh, yeah. I don't think that was sure. meant. And he was stabbing him, like, fucking um, several times, too. I was like, dude, do you think that that is not necessary? I don't like anything where it's, like, forks, screwdrivers, ice picks, all that shit. I don't like. Like, yeah, cheese graters. I wouldn't want a fucking cheese grater on my face, too. I'm sorry. Like, I yeah, love wrestling yeah. and all, but no, I don't want you to fucking fuck up my head with a cheese grater. Sorry. <laughs> but uh but yeah there was a lot of barbed wire i was kind of surprised you didn't see thumbtacks i know right that was like the only thing that they didn't really introduce so they introduced the chain at one point a barbed wire chair which Paige did a gnarly ass fucking where he legit like ran in as fast as possible into the damn chair and took a chunk of his hair out Thankfully, he didn't fucking cut, like, a bunch of shit of it, uh, out of his forehead with that because he, like, legit, like, ran into it. Like, fuck, I was surprised. But, uh, what's it called? Then the fourth what? thing, yeah, and they, I mean... and they, they had a, ta- a couple of tables with barbed wire on them, which both one Moxley got in on and then one um, Paige got in on. And they were showing, like, at one point that Moxley had it over him, like, had the match, and he was kind of, like, waiting. He was trying to have him get counted out, and then he he kept on getting in the match. But that's why I said, like, I was surprised that I liked it as much as I did because I'm not huge into death matches, but the way that they paced the match and how everything went into it, like it, um, like it wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. I thought it was just going to be like a gnarly spot or after a gnarly spot, and then whoever was going to win. And I think that it was nice knowing that uh, Paige won, especially knowing that he fucking hit him with the the buckshot lariat with the chain around his neck, and then he threw him over the ropes and choked him out <laughs> with the chain. I'm like, damn. Yeah, it was a great. It- it was a good ending, and, you know, I think Paige made the match because, again, this was just a another same-old, same-old Moxley match for me. I, I think if it was somebody else in the match, it wouldn't have been as good. I think because uh, Adam Page was in it, made it better. Yeah, and I think essentially I, that's one reason why, like, Paige is one of my favorites in AEW right now. I mean, like, just because the storytelling and everything... And I might as well mention you know, that I'm not a fan of Moxley at all. I mean, yeah. I've been saying this well, for months, the, but I, I'm not. That's a, why I'm mentioning uh, Dynamite and shit too. Is that they built up yeah, that shit I, so well that they had the they so like after this match they were sh- saying pretty much that it wasn't over. Then they started fighting out in the parking lot, led to and the Elite were facing off against the House of Black. And uh, the J- uh, the JAS, the Jericho Appreciation Society, all at the same time. Then they finish up the match between, like, where they do Dante's Inferno on, I think, one of the people from Jericho's uh, side. And then uh, win the match. And then instantly, it was, like, right after, then uh, Paige and them come in the thing and start beating the shit out of each other. Then they, uh, Paige gets into the ring, knocks somebody over the ropes and then turns around. And then like other people are up there, like more of the Blackpool combat club guys. I'm like, they're going to fight him like four on one or whatever. And then the elite show up and he doesn't realize that they're there. <laughs> so then they're like, Oh, I'm out. I'm leaving. And it's like, damn right, you're leaving. So then they cut to black before they even know that Paige turns around and they're there. Right? So I'm like, oh, shit, that's excellent storytelling right there. So they're, and like, eventually, I think that Paige is going to go back with the Elite. The way that they're doing it. I don't know how they're going to do it, but, like, they're, that's one thing that they yeah, do. Yeah, that, that's well what on. they're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. The- 
that's the one thing that they do well on is like the shit between like Paige, the Young Bucks, and the and Kenny. Like they they do that story like super well. <laughs> like one of the best. Well, the only talk do. at this point is that it seems Blackpool Combat Club has gone heel. Yeah, that's what it looks and, like. Yeah, and. And that they're talking, I guess, maybe they'll have to get Brian Danielson to join them to do this whole four-on-four thing. Well, yeah, that's the main thing, which they were saying that he was taking a break. But, I mean, like, mostly because I think after the match that we'll talk about in a minute, like, it sounds like he's taking a break from, like, whatever. So, if anything, he might come back more brutal than he was before. So, I mean, you never know. But, uh... So, yeah, pretty good match. Especially it was the longest on the card, or second longest, I should say, because the main event. But And then Wardlow versus Samoa Joe was... It, it was also another one that I... The ending came out of nowhere. <laughs> because yeah. it seemed like they yeah, were fighting was... back and forth, and I thought that they were going to do, like, a Powerbomb sy- a Symphony with Samoa Joe, but, like... I mean, maybe he couldn't lift him, so they were trying to figure out a way to, like, embarrass Joe, but still make him look strong or something. Because, I mean, the match was okay, but then the... You have no idea, because Wardlow put him in the Kakina Clutch, and that's how he beat Samoa Joe. That was, like, the main thing. I didn't think he was going to beat him with it. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> because the- well but then but then the weird thing was is you know wardlow won and then turned around on the dynamite three days later and loses to Hobbs. yes that's why i thought that was so like- dumb like i get that they're trying to push Hobbs too but and now he's with qt marshall which isn't that great of a heel i mean he's a better heel than a face but i mean like like i don't know i just don't believe like hobbs hobbs would go from being with taz to being with qt marshall it don't make sense to me no it doesn't yeah but like and and to give him the win like that that was just oh weird yeah too. like that he like crotched him like qt marshall uh crotched Wardlow and then Powerhouse Hobbs like pushed a like power a power bombed him or something off the thing and then he couldn't get up again. <coughs> so it was just weird. Like the the match I was just like so shocked that Hobbs won anyway. It was like why did they draw I guess they didn't want to get like have Samoa Joe t- take the shit for that. I don't know. It was just weird. Yeah, I don't know. But, uh, so, yeah, it was, like, an okay match. That's why I said some of them were, like, okay for what they were, but it wasn't, like, great. Like, like the even the next match on the card where it was a four-way tag match, I it could have been a lot better than I thought it was going to be. <laughs> yeah, I don't understand pushing the guns. Yeah, like, they gave them the titles... Off of like cheating for the acclaimed, and okay, they're showing that the acclaimed are chasing the guns because they feel like they're they've been cheated or whatever, right? Okay, that's fine. So, and then they have like even they played the Jay Lethal and Jeff Jarrett shit where they were in this match and they were helping them to take out the acclaimed and Orange and uh, Danhausen during the match. So, I mean, like... And that's another person I'm already tired of. What, Jeff Dan Jarrett? Harrison or... He's oh, getting Jeff all these Jarrett, down... Yeah. No, Jeff Jarrett. He's been back for, like, what, two months in AEW, and he's had, like, four or five title matches already. I mean, because because not only tag team title matches, but he had one against Orange Cassidy for that Atlantic belt thing when they were the... It used to be the Atlantic. Now it's the international belt or something. Um, they re- they renamed it, but Jeff Jarrett was the first one that got the. It's like what the fuck? I mean, I don't get how you go from not even being a part of AEW to having nothing but title matches. Yeah, I know, right? Pretty much. It's been, uh, it just shows that it sounds like he's politicking behind the scenes. 
exactly like he did with TNA. Because he'd, he would bitch about certain people doing that shit, like Triple H and shit. Then he goes to TNA, and then he puts a belt on him like a shit ton. <laughs> he calls himself the king of the mountain, all this bullshit. And then he literally starts to try to do that shit in AEW, too. That's one person I don't yeah, think I don't that they if... ever needed to have Russell in their company. It was Jeff Jarrett. <laughs> Oh, I agree. Well, and now it's like with this, it's like Danhausen can't catch a break. I know, right? It's like he wrestles he, like, and then he gets all hurt the damn time. every time. Like, but they... he also gets hurt every time he actually wrestles. I think he got hurt again, and he's out because he had surgery done or something. Oh, during this so, match or like a um... yeah after after this match he. They announced that he was having surgery. Oh, damn. Seriously. So it's like, I didn't read to see what he actually had surgery on, but it's like, what the hell? I mean, he doesn't wrestle that much, but when he wrestles every time so far, he's gotten hurt. I think the last time he wrestled, he hurt his ankle. Yeah, I know he broke his foot at one point, but yeah. Yeah, or whatever it was. Yeah, but I mean, I'm just saying that he can't catch a break, I guess. Yeah, for real. I mean, which happens, I guess, for like a lot of people, but that's the main thing. But I didn't really like, care for match, this match I all know, that much. It could have been a lot better than it was. But I mean, the person that brought it down for me was Jeff Jarrett. <laughs> like, always does. Mostly because he talks shit. And I don't really like their stable with Sonjay Dutt. I don't. Well, so, yeah. Like, he is so obnoxious. He kills it for me. And then Satnam Singh's just there. You know, oh, the wow, best part about this March match, the best part, sorry, the best part about this match was FTR's return. At the yes. End. And that's why I was like, damn. So the claim is going to chase after the titles, but then FTR is going to win the titles from the guns because you know, it's going to happen. You know, it's going to happen. And then it'll probably be a claim versus FTR. <laughs> and, and then they'll probably lose that match. But, you never know. They could just win it. But, I mean, I don't think if FTR is going to get the title belts again, they're going to have it for a while. <laughs> you know, I just have a feeling it's going to happen. Unless, unless they're just doing like a final match before they leave or some shit. Like, uh, if they get signed by WWE or whatever, knowing that their contracts are like about to be up or some shit, you know. But I think yep. they're kind of like you'll know with by the situation by the result. Well, you'll know where they are in terms of the result of this next match because if they lose, they're probably leaving. Oh yeah, definitely yeah. But that's uh, and that's the main thing. And then like uh, probably I would definitely say that this is MJF's best match, though. Like, uh, well, I still like the face, CM though? Punk one. I mean, again, though, but like, I we mean, talk about, we talk about it's based on who he's wrestling. Yeah. Because like, I mean, like I mean, if he's he wrestling, did good against kind of, uh, Konsuke or Kanasuke, however you say, Takashita. But he holds up to the good wrestlers. But I would say if he wasn't wrestling a good wrestler, the match is shit. Almost every, because he kind of, he goes with the competition. I don't know if I'm using the right word, but like whoever he's wrestling, he kind of stays on par with that person. He doesn't overwork them, which, you know, I think to be a champ, he should be overworking his opponent. Not, not. Oh yeah. He needs to be standing out over the dude. If you're the champ, they should be focusing on what you're doing rather than what Brian's doing. And Brian took a lot of shit in this match to sell it for MJF. Yeah. Yeah, he yeah, he busted his ass in this match. Not saying MJF didn't, but yeah, that's I think what I'm a saying. lot of this like, match is a testament to what Brian Danielson did. Yeah. Like that's what I'm saying is like MGF was made in this match. Because of Brian. <laughs> and you can also tell that MJF... And yeah, you can also tell MJF is somewhat green still. In in terms of certain things. Like the blading that he did when he cut himself. 
you could tell he cut himself really deep because he was bleeding like crazy. Yep. And then, Do you like, remember that? I mean, when, I liked when... his cell <laughs> job of his knee and stuff like that. Like, I mean, he did good at that. Like, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. It's like he did. But that's not you new, though. He's been getting better but also the same yeah like we've but, seen him do but the, also that knee thing he's done that knee feigning the knee injury yeah. part yeah he's almost done every match he's touch, yeah yeah and i know at least so in the like, cm punk one he did like i know at least in that one he did <laughs> but i mean i was kind of liked how he was on his uh like uh like even after the match where he's talking at the scrum, he's like on crutches and he's talking shit. Which okay, so like everybody's been talking about seeing. Did you see up his up eyes WWE. afterwards? Oh yeah, they were fucked up. I saw that uh, like at Dynamite, like he covered his eyes and then he took his fucking. Oh, and Darby Allen made me laugh when he's talking about. Oh, let me go on Twitter and talk shit. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> trying to get my way. I thought that was fucking hilarious. And then supposedly Ruby Soho got fined because she said the word twat. <laughs> you mean uh, Soraya did? Uh, oh, I thought it. Uh, I thought they said Soraya. Uh, Soraya. Oh, Ruby Soho. Was Soraya's the one about. that said it. Oh, okay. So why did Ruby Soho yeah, get fined for it? <laughs> I don't know. Soraya is the one that see, said it because some... she said that's a normal word. She said that's like a normal British word. Like, yeah, you say that as like a. Yeah, that's why not, some people mean were saying same. like you needed to bring. Uh, they wanted to see like more British uh, slang in her promos. I saw that, but like, yeah, what's it called? That's weird. Why would they say in? Because I saw it on on an article where they were talking about, like, Ruby Soho got a fine. And they said that Ruby Soho got fined for saying it instead of Soraya did. Maybe she did say it, and maybe Soraya just responded to it. Oh. I gotta look back. I thought Soraya was the one that said it, though. Well, that's what I was saying. Um, I saw an article where they were saying that Ruby Soho did. So, uh, because she even mentioned it, I thought they said that she mentioned it on her uh, Twitter or something, too. But, I mean, I could be wrong. But, like, the main thing is, like, it's just funny. Like, especially MJF, like, it, it looks like they're building up the pillars of AEW, kind of like that thing, where it was Darby Allen, Sammy Guevara, and I forgot, who was the other pillar that they said that it was? Like, that they were saying were pillars of AEW. I know it was MJF, Darby Allen, Sammy Guevara, and somebody else. Maybe it was the other person that they f featured on there, too, because somebody else came out. I forgot who, though. But they were essentially saying that they... Oh, Jungle Boy, that's who it was. So, yeah, it's, they're building up for the pillars of AEW thing. I guess. It'll probably be like a Fatal 4-Way. Well, yeah, all the, four of them or something. Well, yeah, on Dynamite... Well, I think it was on Dynamite. It was MJF when he was cutting the promo with his fucked up eyes. He came out during doing a bar, bar, his bar mitzvah reboot or whatever. Yeah, the hell. it was like re bar, and, uh, and bar mitzvah or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, Sammy Guevara came out. Um, Darby Allen came out, and Jungle Boy came out. Yeah, because Darby so, Allen was talking about the Twitter thing, and then I heard the like when he took his hat off. They're like, dude, what the fuck is up with your eyes? <laughs> I don't know who said it. I, I, I'm assuming that it was Sammy Guevara, though. Like, he was like, what is up with your eyes, man? <laughs> I thought it was Darby. Uh, was me. I'm trying to remember. Oh, it, it I watched it. Darby. I'm trying to remember who it was. Because I just saw I think that it was they, Darby. It was somebody that said it where it just, it just showed MJF's face with his eyes. But, uh, yeah, like, that was, like, the main thing that I saw. But that was pretty funny. But, like, if they build to that, but, like, honestly, I thought CM Punk would have probably came out. Because, I mean, people were talking about him going to WWE and all this shit. Like, dude, he hasn't left AEW. He hasn't got confirmed that he even left yet. Like, 
There's no proof. Everybody's saying rumors and shit. And I think for right now, but I can tell you, like but, I can, but I can tell you what. If, but I can tell you what. If they bring CM Punk back, then it's going to be hard to believe anything AEW does going forward. Oh, like you because think you're going like to think everything that happens is well, like a work from them. It's not going to be, but. Yeah, it's not going to be believable anymore because it's like all of this shit, the MJF thing, the CM Punk thing, if it all turns out to be nothing, like even the suspension, you you tend to wonder if this was all just laid out to get people breaks. Well, I mean, like, I'm not saying that like both the MJF shit or the CM Punk shit wasn't like real or not i definitely think that well, some it, should happen but i can tell and you what released, if, uh, what's it i called? can tell you uh what's his name but like, i can tell you if it's this guy. i can tell you i can tell you if i can tell you if it's real then um aew is not doing much about things because if i was a boss and somebody like MJF said that shit to me on live TV, he wouldn't have a job anymore. Well, yeah. Like, the thing is, it's Tony If that was Khan, a real thing, and that's... Well, Tony Khan, it seems like he's just thinking about ratings, it seems like, the way that it seems like. Because, I mean, that whole thing seems, like, weird. Because even MJF's coming out and saying, Oh, I needed more money. I didn't really need the money. Like, bitch, that's what you're asking for. <laughs> you're trying to act like you're a rich Well, that was the whole but reason yeah. he said something. Yeah. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like, you, you're you trying to act like you're a rich character, but it doesn't work when you're actually asking for more money. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, it don't work like that. <laughs> but, yeah, it just it makes it seem like we're... Worse. But anyway, like the whole match was like good and it was the best match that he did, but it's more because of Brian than anybody else. Like, like he worked his ass off. He got his ass beat the whole damn time. And then they went and like, at least it was the best Iron Man match probably ever because they've only had like two or three or something. And at least the timing was good. But the problem is, is that they were doing stuff where it was like, oh, Daniel Bryan's up. And then, like, oh, he gets hit in the nuts. And then he get, loses two pins for getting hit in the nuts. It's like, really? You, you lose two, not one, but two pins off of getting hit in the nuts. Really? <laughs> I thought that was a, I thought that was the weakest part of the whole building a story for it like to be like oh we're three three and then and then they don't get another pin and then they go into overtime and blah 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 like i i liked most of the match up until like that was the wonky part for me oh hit you in the dick and then you get two pins out of it okay daniel bryan should have kicked you in the dick and gotten two pins out of that <laughs> you know <laughs> but yeah so neither here nor there best mjf match uh but mostly because brian <laughs> so uh, anything else to add jeremy i don't have anything for that i just i agree with you on that mjf thing it was funny because he got disqualified and he was down 2-0 and then he got two pins right off the bat due to it so it was like well what the fuck was the point of doing that it's like you might as well anyway but yeah, it, again, I, I said my piece in terms of MJF. I, You know, he says he doesn't like hearing that he's green still. I still feel that you can see green stuff in him. It's like Jade Cargill to the center. But I think he's a little further along than Jade Cargill is. And he's wrestled for longer. Because at least he can hold, at least he can, yeah, at least he can hold himself in a match. But like I said, in terms of me watching a champ, they should be, heads and shoulders above their impo- uh, their opponent not kind of wrestling alongside them 
But yeah, that's all I've got for this. I know our next one will be WrestleMania, right? Yeah, Which more than we'll likely. Be, uh, It'll probably be that. We'll be, we'll be talking about that after we get back from it because me and my son are actually going to go watch it live. So yep. we'll and be hopefully doing the podcast, they do Kevin you know, and Sammy. The week after or so. Hopefully they do Kevin and Sammy versus the Usos as the main event. Yeah, they haven't announced the main event for night two yet. Oh, I thought you were saying night, that, that was night, like night one. But okay. Yeah, no night. Yeah, night one is uh, Rhea Ripley and Charlotte. They've already said that's the main event. Oh, so so Roman and Cody has to be the second night then. Yeah, you would think, but I mean, I don't know because. And, but I still, th- I'm still wondering where this whole Kevin, Sammy, Cody thing is going. Like I'm gonna watch Raw tonight and see where, what's going on because I think Roman was on Raw tonight. Yeah, like uh, um, all I saw was that at one point he used the "I love you" line. <laughs> yeah, so so I think it was but, like um, beginning for like saying um if uh he was gonna handle business with sammy and kevin i'm guessing but yeah but i know my kids excited to watch it we'll be going to sofi stadium and watching it from there yeah so, i'm sure it'll be fun josh ain't going this josh ain't going this time yep definitely i do not but... have the money to fly out there again <laughs> um, yeah. we're gonna make a week out of it so yeah so I don't know, one of these years or something like that. I want to do like an AEW pay-per-view, though, just to be different, feel the vibe di- being different or something. But, yeah. Well, we will eventually. For everybody that's made it to this uh, part of the th- podcast, I would say thank you for listening and check out our website for all of our new shit and whenever we make any more podcasts. And all of our other stuff. podcasts. Yeah. Cause- we're supposed to be doing like we, a few we have more po- uh, morbid instinct. Uh, we're supposed to do terrifier for scream creeps soon, and uh, like I think it's Superman four for um, for sci fi grade sci fi grade guard, yeah. So yeah, for all of us at the heart of geek, we will. Peace. See you guys later. Have a good one.